Sometimes you get a good popsicle joke. Sometimes you don't. Sup? Here we are. Back again. Shady's back. Tell a friend. All right. Here's the part. I said a promise. I said it I was going to do it. All right, so let's just talk about how I went about this. So it started out, none of this. Delete it. <laughs> Delete. I was going to. Um, and none of this. Shit, I'll just turn it off for now. And so, okay, so the song was pretty much ending. So it was just, just drums at that point. And I was like, okay, no, I need another part. Uh, so I was like, all right, well, why don't I just get a bunch of sounds? Because, you know, I, I sh could use more of the stems. I haven't used a whole lot, honestly, for a remix. Um, so I got a bunch of those, and I threw this in here because it's it's just a nice little uh, rhythm. Got this little... Did -did 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 -did. Right, and that's uh, pretty much all I had. And then I, gun. I put some bases in there, and I started out with like, pretty much started out with just this. And the reason I'm I'm showing you that is because I want to. Um, highlight the fact that you, you, it doesn't just come out of nowhere. You just put one sound in at a time. Right. You know, you get yeah. in and you start start with the obvious places where a bass would go like like this guy right here, right on the kick, mm -hmm. right on the first beat. And you go, okay, that sounds good. Keep it. This one is on the upbeat, but still kind of an obvious because it like accentuates the kick. You know, yeah, it synergizes it's like with a, the kick. It's not like the thickness that pairs with uh, the bass so it's on the upbeat yeah and it's not really creating its own rhythm too much there mm -hmm. either it's really just um helping what the kick already does the kick and the snare it's almost like a symbol yeah of a bass symbol and then uh what did i do not. i added this guy i believe and then this guy this is just a copy of this these two are the same and then I also took this guy. So then I had. So then, you know, once you start putting more guys in there, you're like, okay, I can kind of hear the full rhythm in my head now. Because once you get this amount of stuff in there, your brain starts to fill in the gaps by itself. You know, you can hear like, oh, there should be some stuff right here. Like, listen. Right? Mm -hmm. The kick's already kind of there. So then you add these two in, which are just chops of the other two layers, just to create a rhythm. And then I added this one. And that's really subtle, but that's just kind of like where the kick is again. Um, and then, you know, doing stuff like uh, this has like a little fade so that it has more of a percussive sound. It's just like a real short like dip. Um, whereas if I took the fade off, it would almost sound a little awkward. Oh yeah. You know? It's too long. But if I just have a fade in there, it kind of just accentuates sort of the rhythmic feel of it. Yeah. Got that little... Ba -ba. Yeah. Um, so and then huh. I was like, alright, well the bass is good, but I need to switch it up more. And I was like, alright, I could use some more of the vocals. So I grabbed the vocals. And what I did was I started to fill in the gaps where the bass hadn't been, isn't doing anything and put some vocal guys in there. So now I have this. It's like a call and response. Exactly. And uh, I like this part because it, it brings it back to the drop before where it's like, oh yeah, this is a remix of a fucking <laughs> song. <laughs> Uh, so that's he the says, whole point of doing this entire thing. Yeah. So you gotta get a losing you and put yeah. it in the song. <laughs> that's um, why they call it losing you. 
And a lot of this was trial and error. So I had a bunch of sounds in here that didn't sound so great. And they were from the vocals. And it's not that the sound didn't mm -hmm. sound great, but in the actual rhythm itself, it just didn't work. That's so. part of the reason, too, you did it off camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some, a lot of times you sometimes just... Sometimes it takes a long time and it's boring it's to like watch. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Sometimes you, you don't know what the puzzle piece is and you're just trying out all the shapes. Yeah. And some of uh, some of them you don't even really notice. Like this one, you probably didn't notice the first time you heard it, but if you look at this now and listen, you'll probably notice. It's just a little... And that's already happening over top of like this bass sort of, but it's kind of also in the gap. So little things like that are something to pay attention to as well. Which subtle, is, subtle things yeah. that you don't necessarily hear, but fill up the gap. Whereas if it's gone, you know, it's just sounds What's a little it? bit more empty. I think that's the beautiful thing about music is that when your mind is in a different state, you can hear other things. So like that song you've listened to a hundred times, maybe like you're really happy and you're hearing all that, those elements. But then when you're in like a different state, like big, sad, you'll hear like other things. And then the song is now new and somehow it shapes itself to yeah. the way that you're feeling. Mm -hmm. That's like what music is. It's fucking great. Fuck, I love it. Yeah, like almost 100% of the time you don't, you miss so much in a yeah. song the first time you hear it. And even the the next five times you hear it, you'll still be missing stuff. Um, I've listened to songs for like a year and then like, a, yeah. and then I'm like, oh my God, there's a harmony in there and I love it. And as you get better at producing, you also pick out more stuff that you mm -hmm. wouldn't have heard otherwise, just because, you know, you've been training your ear. All right, so then the second iteration of this is pretty much I took this, I copied it over, and I said, what can I do to variate it? Um, this bass, a little bit of a new bass. It's got this. Uh, it's yellow. Um, so that's that. And then um, this right here, as you can see on this part, it goes. But on this one, I just copied it, the first uh, little chunk of it, and then I duplicated it twice. So now it goes. And if you add it all together with uh, a little bit of the vocals variation as well, as well, as you can see, I have this. Mm -hmm. So that kind of uh, copies the idea of this where it's like repeating. So now I have. Again. And then to, to pretty much cap it all off, I have this little uh, pitch bend or, or vinyl stop. And what I also did to accentuate this vinyl stop is A, I took the high pass and I automated it like so. If I turn that off. Whereas if I have it on, it gives it more of like a little, like a almost like a, a jump up and then a dive down. Um, and then I have this macro one, which is just automating. Um, one of the macros in the massive here. And if you listen to it without it, that's with it and without it. So it, it gives it that it's kind of the same idea like as the high pass. Yeah. Gives it just more movement as it goes down. Makes it more interesting. It's like a almost like a wall. Yeah. That's I mean that's pretty much what this well, yeah, does. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then it just repeats this. And then the outro, I guess I'll talk a little bit about the outro. Um, it's pretty much just drums. And I may edit this just a little bit and may, maybe like put some more of that like digga 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 in there. Yeah, um, some little maybe, flavors. But the main reason that it's mostly just drums and then it one element drops out and then another is for DJing purposes. Because if I want to play this live, this oh, makes it a lot it. easier got to bring it. in another song. Well, it's just, just like, like break. Yeah. So how long does it take you to get used to like, because 
we used to write songs back in the day and we always used to love like having these crazy fucking finishes and then now you have to like kind of just leave it open so that another song can come in yeah like how did you get into the mindset of just being like well i know this isn't really interesting but it's just a spot where it's just a thing that people come to expect in edm there's a lot of songs that don't end that way like feed me pretty much says fuck you at the end of every (laughs) song he's ever written and so it's really hard to dj him unless you cut it out somewhere in the middle of his song you know okay and it's just kind of like I want to be able to drop my own songs when I play out right. and I don't actually do it as often as I could because when I write the song, you know, a lot of the time I don't have that mindset where I just end the song how I think it should sound and make it sound gotcha. good. Whereas when it comes to playing it out, you know, it doesn't really help me. Mm-hmm. So this time around, I wanted to kind of have that in mind. So that's why I did it that way. It's just so strange when you listen to them back and you don't have that fade into another song. You're like, well, yeah, skip. <laughs> if you listen to a bunch of Mord Fustang songs, pretty much every song he has ends There's with just There's so many drums. like, okay, I get it, I get it, the end, yeah. it's the end. Yeah, I, I always the, skip it because yeah. it's like, it's fine. I've heard the whole song, and I understand why he did it. But, you should yeah. put a joke at that. <laughs> just for people who are like, stay after the movie credits. Um, and I guess a few things I want to talk about. All right, I'm using Zansky's snare from his stem in this drop as opposed to the other snare in the first drop just to give it because it, it hits a little harder and it's it's more appropriate for this kind of heavy part um and on the very last snare i'm automating a reverb to turn on so if you listen so that's when the next song would actually drop into whatever part oh okay you know I get it. and it kind of it's almost like you have a, a yeah. crash or something there. It, it helps it blend. So it's more. not like a hard cut. It's exactly. Like, so it doesn't well, just like end. Fell yeah. Because that'll that'll disrupt uh, the the listener it's on like the something's dance floor. Gone. I don't like gone things. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and one more thing that I forgot to mention was I created a hi hat uh, pattern thing in Massive. I'll, I'll just talk about this. This guy right here. Oh yeah, I remember those. Yeah. So if I actually I'm gonna that turn was an off experiment, wasn't it? Yeah, a little bit. I mean I've I've done it before. So oh, okay. I, I kinda knew what I was doing. I'm gonna turn off the compressors so you can just really hear. Right. So if I hop into massive, let's talk about what's going on here. So it's just bright noise. That's what's happening. There's no oscillators, just the noise portion. Okay. I have the amp set to the performer here. And as you can see, it's on 16th notes. And it has this like really staccato sort of percussive pattern up here. And that's what's giving it that that really fast uh, hit. Like it sounds like a hi-hat. Then to give it sort of like a rhythm, so it's like going up and down, like chicka 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 chicka. Yeah, what I'm doing is I'm taking this LFO five and I have it uh, reset every quarter note. So basically every four hi-hat hits, this resets. And what this is tied to is uh, the color and also the amp of the noise. So if I mute five on both of these, And one more thing that five is tied to is here, but I'll talk about this in a second here. I'll mute that. So you can hear without the five LFO, it's just the same noise over and over and over. There's no movement. There's no variation. It kind of just sounds like a sprinkler. Yeah. You miss like the, the triplet feel or whatever the hell the yep. r- math is. I don't math. So with the five LFO, every... Uh, every four notes it resets so the first one's the strongest and then the fourth one is the weakest okay and then one last thing I did was I put five on uh, this crossfader between these two shapes so down here it gives it less of a percussive staccato feel and more of like an open hi-hat so essentially what this is doing is simulating that the first hi-hat hit of every four is more open and the last one is more of a closed hi-hat so 
if I, un here, I'll, I'll mute this. Now I'll unmute it so you can hear. Gotcha. Peace. So the one of them is doing like almost like a velocity. Sorry, say that again. I, I was, it was oh. cutting you off. So one of them's doing like a, a velocity thing, like a more aggressive, yep. like, like one, like, like one of your hands is stronger than the other one. Exactly. And then the other one is doing the open and close the pedal the footwork. Pretty cool. much the pedal. Yeah. And if I just exaggerate this uh, crossfader, you'll hear more of the difference. Just so cool. you get a more clear idea of what that's doing. So yeah, play around with this kind of stuff because you can really accomplish a lot in Massive. Just, you know, just have fun, you know? Don't take, <laughs> don't take lots too seriously. Talk like, out a juice box every now and then. You know, and you can even do stuff like take this concept, just go ahead and just copy what I did here. Uh, and then just like variate stuff, you know, maybe put another LFO. But remember uh, what you did, because if you yeah. make something cool and you don't know how you got there, it sucks. Like run this run this through a filter or something and then put an LFO on the filter, you know, to exaggerate that. Or um, you can change the, the noise type, like to metallic or something, you know, to give you a, a different sound, you know, just, just experiment with this kind of idea because Massive isn't just for, you know, basses and chords and stuff. You, mm -hmm. you can do a lot with noise in Massive, so experiment with that. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I guess on the next few episodes, I'll be mixing uh, the song. So the next few episodes, we'll have a pretty radical change in tone. I'm going to just be talking about, you know, overall mixing objectives and how to accomplish that, how to make your song finalized, and then we'll be done. It's like 50% of the song, though, is mixing. Eh. Well, well yes, you go along yes, the way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 50% yeah. or maybe even more is mixing. Um, but a lot of that, if done, if you do it correctly, if you produce correctly, you you've done it. a lot of the legwork for yourself along the way. Yeah, and we have, and hopefully you've you've seen how I've accomplished. And hopefully that. you've grown along the way. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, all right. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.